Welcome to Watch Complications in part four of Brian and the Grail. Quick note, subscribe if you haven't, hit the bell if you want updates on this series and the others, save the playlist, watch through them at your own leisure, and thanks for the continued support of everyone on the channel. It's time to formally review and compare in the flesh the pros and cons of these two cheapo watches. I am really thoroughly enjoying this finding a cheapo stand-in, by the way, for my six to eight year save for the Armstrong. I'm wearing the Beamer today actually, and it's not, you know, time's not set correctly, date and stuff like that. But I was trying on this new strap I got for it because the uh, the one that came on it is just really terrible. Black strap, you know, low quality. So I bought this, um, again, not expensive, 10 bucks off of Amazon. I really like the look. It's got the, you know, blue alligator look. It's got the holes in it, a little bit cooler for summer. I get some air movement through the wrist and I'm actually really enjoying this strap. It's super comfortable. And let me take this off and we will compare the pros and cons of these two that I have rested upon to be my stand-in. Now, as I've pointed out when I was showing you online, this Reef Tiger is a little bit closer look. Now, this is a direct knockoff of the, the, the Speak Marine, but it's also visually more similar to the Mirror Force Resonance by Armin Strong because the wheels are on the left side of, of the dial face as opposed to the bottom. By the way, if any of you out there know if the Binger is a copy of anything or an attempted a copy of anything like the Reef Tiger is an attempted copy of the Speak Marine, uh, do let me know. I, I've not come across this anywhere else, so this might be, you know, Binger actually designed this look and whatnot. So, but if you know if this is a, the attempted a copy of anything, just let me know. You just write it in the comments. Okay, reasons to like the Binger. The finishing is much better. And of course, we're talking about finishing of some, you know, very low cost, low manufactured, you know, Chinese watches. But the Binger is much better from a distance, also up close, whether that's the, the brushing and polishing on the hands and the bridges and the dial face and the case on the reverse, the rotor, this one is a lot better in terms of the finishing. So it's just got a, a better quality look about it. I will show you with the macro lens on uh, both of these up close. Uh, the pictures will be in the blog post, but I'll show you video here too of these up close. So one thing is the finishing on the Binger is much, much better. All right, the second thing about the Binger that I like is that the wheels are quiet, the flywheels. The, on the Reef Tiger, these are purely decorative. It's just a couple of pendulums, basically, that flip back and forth. And these things, as I showed you previously, let me shake it around. You hear them rocking. People could hear you, if you were in a quiet room and you're just moving around, riding, people would just hear this constant grinding sound. So that is utterly annoying. Whereas on the Binger, they're quiet. They're what you would normally expect in terms of escapements. Now, one of these is decorative. Both of these are decorative on the Reef Tiger. The right one is decorative. The one on the left is actually connected to the movement. So. One of these is actually functional, the other isn't, whereas they're both decorative over here. So that's, you know, the second good thing uh, that I like about the Binger as opposed to the Reef Tiger. First, it's much higher quality in terms of the finishing, and it's quiet. Now, the Binger does have a little bit of a wobble to it because it has the large rotor. So, you know, as you're moving your wrist around, you can feel the, the rotor swinging back and forth a little bit. From my perspective, that's a lot better than having this constant grinding sound as these things are turning. I will say um, another thing is that the date, on, this date is small on both of them. Uh, this one is the hand moving around uh, the moon phase. Of course, the, the Reef Tiger doesn't have a moon phase. They could have put one maybe up here or down here. They had the day and night on the actual Speak Marine down here. They could have put in a day and night or something, but you know they didn't. So the date's small on both, but I still prefer this. This one is actually really hard to see um, when it's just sitting on your wrist. It's actually easier to see this 
uh, particularly because you know where, where 1 and 31 are. So again, that's sort of another point in, in Binger's favor. The next thing is, I guess I, I kind of mentioned the finishing on the case, but I like this case style a lot better. It's polished. Uh, I don't like this ridged, um, ribbed surface on the sides of the Reef Tiger. The strap is connected with screw-in pins on the Reef Tiger. So here's an example. Let me show you this of the, of the quality. This came to me in this state. You can see there are scratches around the screw pin for the strap. And I, had not, I hadn't taken this off yet. That's how it came to me. So whoever put it on in the factory, that's how they, they scratched it up a few times. So one negative of screw-in pins, they're fairly secure. Um, there's a lot of you know watches and, and companies out there that are using them. The big negative is that if you don't have someone taking care to, to put the straps on correctly, it's real easy to scratch the outside of the lugs. It's very invisible. So you unscrew this one and you unscrew one underneath. And in both cases, those locations are scratched up around the lugs. So that's sort of another knock against the Reef Tigers. I don't particularly like screw-in pins. It's just not, I like changing straps a lot. So it's a little bit more tedious in terms of when I want to change the strap, but that's just my preference. I, just, I prefer quick release straps. Let's go to the reverse. Now, again, the finishing's better here. I, I, like, the, I like the look of both really from, from the reverse. I like the engraving around the Reef Tiger a little bit better, where it has the information like, you know, the water resistance, the brand name information about the model. It's a little bit better on, on the Reef Tiger. Of course, there's more to show here in terms of complications. That's why this is so layered is you have multiple complications going on. Over here you have the single movement. All it's doing is the timekeeping. Yeah, that has the date on it. But again, these are purely decorative. It's essentially, uh, the plate containing the movement just attached to a decorative plate holding these uh, little carousels, these little flywheel things. So the reverse is really kind of, you know, preference, you know, and what you like to see visually, even though you're not looking at it a lot. This one doesn't wobble as much, of course, because it's got a much smaller movement. This is eight and three quarters, a term, I believe, in terms of the, the actual movement size. And it's nice and quiet uh, in terms of the actual timekeeping because it's, it's a small movement. Um, and it's unadjusted, you know, but it will, could be adjusted. You, it could keep fairly good time. Uh, but, you know, I do like the sort of, it's not gold, but the engraving that they've done in the, in the yellow that has information. It's, you know, got the caliber and the brand and the number of jewels. And, you know, it's got the beat rate, 28.8. So it, you know, preference, right? In terms of which one you think looks um, better in the reverse. This one is just all movement. This one is a lot of decoration going on. So in terms of what the manufacturers say their watches um, are or contain versus reality, the Binger in their advertising said that the crystal was sapphire. And I mentioned already that it's not. The Reef Tiger also mentioned it was Sapphire. So you know what you do? You test. So I've got my tester to let me know which one is lying. But in the meantime, one of the things that I also mentioned in the online part was that the Binger said that the strap was 19 millimeter. And I know you all trust me, but let me just show you if they were being truthful. No, it's 21. As I said, it's a 21 millimeter. So I measured it before I ordered some replacement straps for it. So it's not 19 millimeter, it is 21. So you gotta watch for those little things um, in terms of marking the line. I don't, I don't know why, it's probably just a typo, you know, but whatever. The Reef Tiger is 22. So what that means is, again, talking pros and cons, the 21 millimeter is a more of a non-standard size. So you would have a harder time. I mean, you can these days with Amazon, but you can have sometimes a little bit more difficulty finding a strap you want in 21, you know, millimeter instead of 22 millimeter. 
which is a more standard size for watches that are in the 40 to 44 millimeter range in diameter. Okay, so back to crystal testing. Uh, you may have seen these on other channels before. I'm going to turn that down to three. So I've set the volume up to three and then you put your finger or two on the back and then you touch the crystal and if it's sapphire, it will go up to seven or eight and start beeping. So you can see when I put the tip on the Binger crystal, it is not sapphire. Put it on the Reef Tiger, it is sapphire. So again, Binger sort of not being completely straightforward in their um, online information. They say sapphire in multiple places and then they say some sort of, you know, like gorilla something something. Uh, and usually on these watches, the case backs are not sapphire, usually um, mineral crystal, saving a little bit of money. And it is mineral crystal on both of them. So at least the Reef Tiger, one thing it has going for it is they were honest about it being sapphire. They also say it's anti-reflective. I don't think there's any anti reflective or AR coating on this. I've been looking at this a lot today in different light and it's reflecting quite a bit for having AR coating. So I am really skeptical as to whether or not it actually has any AR coating. Before I show you the time setting features on this, one more thing is just to remember that one of the trade-offs with these two is two millimeter difference in diameter and two millimeter difference in height. So the Binger is two millimeters taller. So you can see that the Reef Tiger is a little bit thinner. So this does have a slimmer profile, but it is also two millimeters larger in diameter. So here I've got smaller diameter, but a little bit more thickness. That's because of the extra complications. Here we've got more diameter, so it looks a bit bigger on the wrist, but it's also a little bit thinner. One of the things I don't necessarily like about this, which is fine because if you're going to wear this regularly, it's an automatic movement, is that the crown is tiny. So spinning this, I, it, is, it is hard to actually spin this. The crown isn't nearly big enough to, to get a good grip on it. But, you know, it's an automatic movement. So really you can just spin it once or twice or you could just start, you know, put on your wrist or shake it around for a few seconds and then set the time. So not a huge deal, but I don't like the size of the crown. It needs to be a little bigger. Um, or just be a bit of different design. So in terms of the time setting, all the crown does, so I pulled out, it's only got one position. So the crown's got one position, but we got these other complications on here. So all this does is get me to my time setting, okay? Hour and minute. It's not hacking. So you can see I've pulled it out, it's still moving. So that's all the crown does. The crown doesn't get you to the moon phase or the date. That is what these push buttons are for on the sides. So for quick setting anyway, you know, if I turn the crown and I get to 12, let's go another 12 hours here. And you'll see that this will get the date to flip. You can see that it flipped there. Okay. When I got to 12 o'clock, so you could do it that way, but if you were not wearing this very often and you were, you know, 10 days or 20 days off and you had to flip this thing around, that'd take you a long time to, to get the, the time setting correct for the date. So that's what these little push buttons on the sides are for. These are quick sets for the moon phase and the date. Again, like the crown, this isn't a huge deal if you're wearing this regularly, but if you are you know, shifting between watches and you've got to mess with this every time, it'd be nice if this was all connected via the crown just so you didn't have to have a different tool to kind of help you because just using your finger this you can't really push these very easily with just your just your finger I'm trying right here I can't get it to, to really flip what I've found works best for pushing these is a toothpick one because it's similar to pegwood and it's not gonna scratch or damage this and it can also get enough central pressure on this to push it correctly um, so have toothpicks handy if you're going to set this. But you can see as I push it, you can see the date flipping. So that's the quick set for the date. Okay, here it clicking there. So you can set it to whatever the, you know, current date is. Let me get this down here a little bit. Okay, so that's the one on the right. 
the one on the left controls the moon phase. So you would look up whatever the current moon phase is and you would, you know, just click through and transition to the appropriate moon phase. And so let me just get my handy dandy tool, my toothpick, and you can see as I push it, it rotates. And just to show you that this is not a 24 hour wheel, that it is a moon phase, you can see this rotating. You can see that the printing here is not exactly um, correct in terms of, you know, uh, new moon, full moon, in terms of locations of the printing, because these should both be gone. Instead, that doesn't happen on here, about this stage. So you can see both moons. Um, so it's not an extremely great or accurate um, moon phase to any particular extent, I'm guessing. And like I said, I haven't messed with it much. You can see the date and the whole thing moving when I push this. I don't know, it's just kind of strange. After seeing it on this one, I've looked into it a little bit more, and there's plenty of, you know, low-end watches out there with... But yeah, that's the uh, quick set for the date and moon phase on the finger. I did put both of these on the time grapher this morning, and the Reef Tiger has a movement where we at least know where it's from, you know, who made it, and we can figure out exactly what caliber it is. So it has the Miyota movement. It's losing about two to three seconds a day. The Binger, and it is running at 28.8, by the way, so that is correct. The Binger, which is interesting because it has the both of these escapements going on, the beat rate it picks up is 43.2, which is, of course, not what's actually being used to keep the time, which is kind of funny, but it's a little bit more sporadic. It in different positions is doing fairly different amounts. So in one position, it might be uh, gaining five, and another one might be gaining 10, and another might be gaining 15. So this one's more consistent. This one's more sporadic. The Reef Tiger is losing time, and the Binger is gaining time. Generally, I would always prefer gaining time. So at least, you know, if you're not adjusting the time very often, it's better to be early to things than late to things. So they could both be, you know, adjusted a little bit more. Neither of them has been adjusted, but just to give you an idea of the timekeeping of both of these. Well, that's a lot of information, but hopefully you're finding it both entertaining and useful. In the next video, we're going to do the macro view really up close. You're going to see all the imperfections and tiny details uh, with the macro lens on the camera, which I think is a, a fun, really fun thing to do. So that's the next video. Keep watching.